All right, today we're going to look at graphs of the form y equals a sine wx and also y equals a cosine of wx, where the absolute value of a is the amplitude and 2 pi over w is the period. I'll go ahead now and for review, let's take a look at just plain old y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x as far as patterns on the graphs. We look at sine of x, we know the period of that is 2 pi. And so I'll go ahead and put a split up into force. We know that the range is going from negative 1 to 1. As far as the pattern of sine, we know that it's 0 at the beginning, the middle, and the end. It has its peak a fourth away through, and its minimum three-fourths away through. As far as taking a look at y equals cosine of x, we know it has a period of 2 pi also. The range, once again, from negative 1 to 1. As far as the pattern of that graph, it has its peak at the beginning and the end, the minimum in the middle, and it hits 0 at 1 fourth away and 3 fourths away. All right, so once again, Sine of x is 0 at the beginning, middle, and end. It has its peak a fourth way through and its minimum three-fourths away through. Cosine of x has its peak at the beginning and the end, its minimum in the middle, and 0, one-fourth away, three-fourths away. Thinking about that will help you in graphing these more general graphs of a sine wx and a cosine wx. As I mentioned, when we have a sine wx and a cosine wx, the amplitude is the absolute value of a. So for example, if you have a 3 in front, that tells me that the range of sine will go from negative 3 to 3 as opposed to negative 1 to 1. The period is 2 pi or w. So for example, let's just find the amplitude and period, I'm just abbreviating here, for the following, say I have a y equals negative 3 sine of 1 half x. So the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 3, so it's 3. Actually, when you graph the negative, we'll involve flipping the graph or reflecting about the x-axis, we'll get to that in a little bit. The period is 2 pi divided by a half. But well, you know that when you divide by a fraction, you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So instead of, you know, as we're dividing by one half, we're multiplying by the reciprocal two. And so the period works out as being four pi. Now let's take a look at some graphs. First of all, let's take a look at four sine of three x. The amplitude, absolute value of 4 is 4. The period is 2 pi over 3. So as far as graphing this, the amplitude is 4, so we know that the range is going to go from negative 4 to 4. Period, we're going out to 2 pi over 3. Let's split up the 4, so in other words, half the way would be pi over 3. And for what's worth, a fourth away would be half a pi over 3, so that would be pi over 6 if you go through that. Now, as far as the basic shape of sine, as I mentioned from the beginning, we know that sine is 0 at the beginning, middle, and end. It has its peak fourth way through and its minimum three-fourths away through. This is enough to give us a decent sketch of the graph. Now, you could continue on and do more than one period if you want. But that gives you a decent idea as far as what's going on. All right, let's take a look at another one involving sine. That <clears throat> y equals negative one half sine three fourths x. The amplitude 
is the absolute value of negative one half, which is one half. The period which I'll just write as b and p is two pi over three fourths, which would be two pi times the reciprocal four thirds. And so you get that the period is eight pi over three. Range, we're going from negative one half to one half. Split them in the force. This would be four pi over three. If you want to label this, this would be two pi over three. This would be six pi over three or two pi. Now notice that this is a negative one half. Of course, we, we know we got zero beginning, middle, and the end. But this being a negative, instead of having this type of shape, it's now going to look more like this. I scribbled there accidentally. Okay, ignore that. Uh, but anyway, what's going to happen is that you're going to have your minimum a fourth away through and its maximum three fourths away through. That is a graph is reflected about the x-axis. If it were a positive one half, it would look more like standard shape like this. All right, so we've looked at a couple sine ones. Let's look at a couple cosine ones. So I have y equals negative 2 cosine 1 half of x. The period, 2 pi over 1 half, which would be 2 pi times 2, or that is 4 pi. The amplitude A is 2. Notice that this is another one that's going to be flipped. All right, so we have 4 pi. So halfway would be 2 pi. This would be pi, 3 pi. All right, then we got neg 2 to 2. Now, cosine, we know that it typically is in this type of shape, as far as the peak, the beginning in the middle, or beginning in the end. But this being a negative 2, it's going to flip, so you're going to have your minimum at the beginning and the end. Okay, the minimum now is at the beginning and the end. The peak is in the middle. Of course, you still have a 0, 1 fourth, and 3 fourths away. Like I said, if we're positive 2, it would look more like this. The negative 2, we have that. And let's look at another one with cosine. Taking my number four. <laughs> Say I have a y equals nine fifths cosine of negative three pi over two x. All right, this one's kind of different. You got a negative in with the x on that. But it ends up that cosine is an even function. That is the cosine of minus theta the same thing as the cosine of theta. So in other words, what I have here would be the same thing as 9 fifths cosine of just 3 pi over 2 x. That is, I can just drop the negative. Now, that's different than sine, by the way. That is, the sine of minus theta is the opposite of sine of theta. So if you have a problem where there's a negative with a sine, you'd have to put the minus sign front. But anyway, that's what's going on here. We can see that the amplitude is 9 fifths. The period, you've got 2 pi divided by 3 pi over 2. So it's 2 pi times 2 over 3 pi. All right, so this is kind of different. The pi's divide out. And so we got a period of 4 thirds. All right, so that's a little different. Usually the period will have pi in it, but this one does not. All right, 9 fifths. Well, that's about 2, whatever. But uh, so 9 fifths. Split into fours. This is 2 thirds. This is 1 third. This would be 3 thirds or 1. And this is positive, so think about the basic shape of cosine. You have a peak at the beginning and the end, minimum in the middle, zero, one-fourth away, and three-fourths away. And so you have that. Switch it up here so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so once again, minimum in the middle, uh, peak, one, or beginning and the end, zero, one-fourth away, and three-fourths away.